Hello and welcome everyone to our latest presentation on immune effector cell associated neurotoxicity syndrome. This is in reference to the case which was recently published in our website. CAR T cell therapy. It is basically a new treatment which has been evolved for the treatment of hematological malignancies especially and it has been tried in other fields as well but currently it is of use mainly in hematological malignancies in this they remove blood from the patient to get their t cells then they make a car t cell in the lab which means a chimeric antigen receptor t cell this they do by inserting a gene for the car once the gene is inserted, it results in manifestation of these chimeric antigen receptors, which makes this T cells the CAR T cells. Then they grow these CAR T cells in a culture media. Finally, it is infused to the patient where these CAR T cells directly attack the tumor cells and kill them. So looking more closely, this is the CAR T cell with the CAR that is the chimeric antigen receptor. This is the receptor. This recognizes the antigen which is present in the tumor cells. With the antigen recognition, there is a signaling cascade resulting in inflammatory mediators. These inflammatory mediators result in the cell death of the tumor cells. In the initial stages, it was thought to be a very safe process without much side effects. Here, since the T cells are directly attacking the tumor cells and killing them, there were not much complications expected. However, that was not the case. The infusion of CAR T cell is followed by five phases of response. The phase one is when the CAR T cells are getting infused and getting accumulated in the peripheral blood so one first they appear in the peripheral blood then they localize in the tuber site that is the phase two phase three is the inflammatory response where you find a surge in the inflammatory response so now the problem that was faced was this inflammatory response was not just restricted to the tumor cell area it was throughout the body in many cases, not in all cases, but in many cases it was seen that the inflammatory mediators were found outside the tumor site as well, resulting in a systemic inflammatory response. Now this systemic inflammatory response initially results in what is known as the cytokine release syndrome, a syndrome which we now closely relate with the COVID-19 infections. Now, once there is an inflammatory response, this results in leaky capillaries or endothelial damage. This damaged endothelium results in affecting the blood brain barrier, resulting in a phase four that is the development of the neurological symptoms. Finally, once the tumor cells are released, the cytokine response decreases and there is a gradual decline in the cytokine level. That is phase five. Now, let's see what happens over here. The CAR T cells were initially expected to directly attack the tumor cells and kill them. However, these inflammatory markers result in the recruitment of the circulating monocytes, resulting in the macrophage activation. This is done by the CAR T itself as well as the cytokine that have been released. Apart from that, the tumor cells that are damaged result the DAMP, that is damage associated proteins these damp also result in activation of the macrophages now these activated macrophages release interleukin 6 interleukin 1 and nitric oxide this results in a vascular leakage hypertension and more production of cytokines resulting in what is known as the cytokine release syndrome now this is what is present in the peripheral blood now this can also affect the brain now the same thing the recruited macrophages 
result in inflammatory mediators and cytokines. Now this can affect your blood brain barrier. Now this blood brain barrier being disrupted because of these circulating cytokines results in recruitment of the CAR T cells into the brain as well as the recruitment of the macrophages. This results in an inflammation inside the brain as well with the activation of the resident microglia. Now this can result in clinical features that is toxic encephalopathy which can start with word finding difficulty, confusion, dysphagia, aphasia, impaired fine motor skills and somnolence. So once the infusion of CAR T cells has been initiated, it is expected that the patient will develop some sort of a cytokine release syndrome within two to three days. That is a fever or more severe response also. But once you start getting this features, you must be aware that the patient is developing some kind of a neurological response as well. Now, in severe cases, it can lead to seizure, motor weakness, cerebral edema, and even coma. So the features can get severe and really get severe very soon. Now, the treatment for the cytokine release syndrome as again, which has been quite extensively dealt with because of the SARS-CoV-2 infections. The most important one till now is the tocilizumab, which is the standard of care, which is a IL-6 antagonist. Apart from that, we can block the IL-1 response by Anakinra, the GMCSF by Lenzilumab, the Dacetinib, which is the kinase inhibitors, the inhibitors of cytokine cat catecholamine release, that is metirosin, and TNF inhibitors were also have also been used. So apart from this, the standard therapy still remains steroids. So if you are finding neurological symptoms, you start with dexamethasone 10 mg OD. This is provided the patient doesn't have severe symptoms like seizure and cerebral edema. However, if the symptoms do not reduce with dexamethasone 10 mg OD or if the patient has severe symptoms, then you can escalate the dose to 10 mg 6 hourly. This can be given for a period of 2 to 3 days. Now, apart from that, a seizure prophylaxis should be added if the patient is having severe symptoms. So thank you for your patience and check our website for further information.